Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. William Gray, and I'd like to welcome you one more time to the Way of the Cross broadcast. I'd like to say I'm so happy to be with you, and I want to say thank you to Dr. Joseph for one more opportunity to share the gospel with you around the world. And as we begin, I'd like to begin first with a time of worship. And so please give us the roll in of Dr. Joseph, please. Thank you. Hello again. As I said, I'm Dr. William Gray, and I want to share with you today a very special message regarding faith. I'm going to begin at Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and I'm going to share with you what God says about faith. And then after I read this scripture, I want to show you how to put, your, put feet to your faith so that every promise of God that has been made to you 
will come to pass. And the reason why I'm sharing this message with you today is because many people have said to me and have said to their pastors and said to their families, you know, I've always had faith. I've had strong faith. And what I believe for didn't come to pass. And they said, well, you know, all I had to do was to speak to this or to speak to that and to just wish for things to happen and just without consciousness of thinking about what they're saying, they are misusing faith and expecting God to bless their will versus God blessing his word of his promise to each and every one of us. Because when we adhere to what Jesus has said, what God has said in his written word and in his spoken word, then every promise that God has ever made to you will come to pass. Now, beginning at Hebrew, the 11th chapter, begin of the first verse, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. I want you to understand that from this very first verse in Hebrews 11th, it starts with the way that God has always operated in his kingdom. He starts with something that is nothing, and he speaks into existence those things that he has said. And this is the pattern that you and I are to follow when we're exercising faith. We speak those things that be not as though they are with expectation in our hearts that they will be. The second verse says, For by the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by, by it he being dead, yet speaketh. I want you to understand that God has a requirement with the gift of your faith. Now, what am I speaking about? When we offer a sacrifice unto God, of our faith, it has to be an, an acceptable sacrifice. That sacrifice that we offer to God of our faith cannot be with spot or blemish or anything of that nature. It has to be a perfect sacrifice. Well, what are you talking about? We're not offering a lamb or a dove or a sheep or anything like that. But when we offer up our faith, our faith cannot be mixed with Fear. Let me tell you how fear is an enemy of faith and it will curtail your faith being put into action and God's word acting on your faith. Faith is an enemy of God. And 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. When you're offering this perfect sacrifice of faith, unto God, it cannot be tainted with fear. You can't speak, God, I hope that you do what I'm asking you. You have to speak knowing and believing that what you have prayed, especially when you are praying what is found in the scriptures, God will bring that promise of his to pass in your life. It works for everyone. It works for men. It works for women. It works for anyone of any nationality in the world, and it works any place in the world, but you cannot allow faith, your faith to be contaminated with fear. See, when you believe what God has said, and when you are believing what God has promised, you cannot doubt in any capacity in your mind because perfect love cast out fear, and God is love. I want you to understand that your faith cannot be contaminated with fear because faith contaminated is faith that is reversed and it will not be put into action and God's hands are tied when you have fear. 
Now, God says that be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That same scripture in 2 Timothy 1 say, says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of sound mind. Now, you cannot be conformed to this world and thinking about how the economy is going in this world. You are living in God's economy, and God's economy is not dependent upon which political party is in office, which political candidate is getting elected, which political candidate has electoral votes, and how they're going to be swayed one way or the other. Your faith is not in the political system of this world. Your faith is not in the economic system of this world. I want you to understand that in this 11th chapter of Hebrew, it's going to explain how when Abraham received his gift of faith and God's promise of faith to Abraham's seed, that it was a covenant that God had made with Abraham and his seed. And you and I are that seed through Christ Jesus that is to receive the promise now in this time and especially at this time in the year of Jubilee. My friends, I want you to understand that 2016, between September 23rd of 2015 and September 22nd of 2016 is the biblical calendar for the year of Jubilee. Never again in my lifetime and probably not in your lifetime will we ever experience another year of Jubilee like this because this is the 50th year of years of seven. This is a, the seventh year of sevens which equals 50, which is the year that everything that has been promised to you, everything that has been promised to your parents, everything that has been promised to your grandparents, they may not be alive, everything that's been promised to your ancestors belongs to you by faith if you know how to operate in faith. Again, I said before that faith contaminated with fear cannot work. Also, faith cannot work when there's anything that's in our heart that contaminates us from loving perfectly because faith works by love. My friend, if you have fear that God's word is not going to happen, if you have fear that you, because you failed in accomplishing what you desired before, because you've tried that before, you've tried this before, you've given your tithe, you've, you sowed seed, and you're promised there was not a harvest on your seed, I want you to understand that one of three things has happened. Either you sowed in fear, or you had faith that was contaminated with fear, or there was strife in your heart, or there was unbelief in your heart, and God will not work with faith that's contaminated with fear or with contamination of strife, if you have any offense against anyone or if you have, been, you have been personally harmed by someone and you have refused to, to accept forgiveness or to forgive forgiveness to those who have harmed you, then faith cannot work. God's word says that faith contaminated cannot work. And I want you to understand that in this year of Jubilee that will not occur for another 50 years, this is the time that you need to get on board and you need to make sure that your heart is pure before God so that every promise that has been made to you, not only in God's word, but maybe you've received a word from a known person prophetic person, a person that has, that walks in the office of a prophet or has the gift of prophecy, has spoken to you a word to you direct, and you know that that person is a true prophet or they have a true gift of prophecy, then you can believe what they have said, but normally God has already spoken to you 
what that man or woman of God has been saying to you, and you have been reading that promise in God's word. When God gave us this book of his promise, of his will and testament, he made very precious promises from Genesis to Revelation of his covenant to you and I. And it will work 100% of the time for anyone who understands God and who operates in pure faith that is not contaminated with fear, nor with unforgiveness, nor with strife, because God will not operate in the realm of strife, because God's word only works in the realm of love. I want you to understand that this is the most exciting time of our lives to be living. I'm going to continue here in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and I want you to understand that if you have a promise from God, that if you adhere to what I'm saying today, that every promise of God within the next seven months between now and September 22nd of 2016, that you can have everything that God has said when you begin to speak what is found in Mark 11, the chapter Mark 11, which I'm going to turn to in just a few moments. But I'm going to continue right now in Hebrews 11 chapter at the fifth verse. And it says that by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had had translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now listen to the words that I just shared with you. Enoch pleased God, and it's very important for you and I to please God. One of the things that we have to remember is that we cannot be conformed to this world, but we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, and that is that we can't do things the way the world does things. We have to do things completely according to God's word and the covenant agreement that he has made with us to have a pure heart and right thinking. We cannot have fear contaminating our faith. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for that he, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, it says in Psalms 1 that blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor who stands in the way of sinners, nor who sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do we meditate day and night. We meditate day and night. And when we meditate day and night on the word of God, we are like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and we shall bring forth our fruit in our season. I want you to understand that this is the year of Jubilee. It doesn't matter what didn't happen in 2005, or 1999, or 1980. This is the year of Jubilee, 2016. And your faith can have wings put to it, and you can believe and you can trust what God has said in his word because he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you meditate day and night on God's word and you believe his promises, then you can take the promises of God that are found in Mark 11, 23 and 24. Let me turn to that scripture. And Jesus says in in the Mark eleven twenty three. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. That is the key right there, that you do not doubt in your heart. Because when you begin to doubt, your faith is contaminated. And when your faith is contaminated, God's 
hands are tied. He says, but, but shall believe that those things which he shall, shall come, saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he saith. I'm going to read that one more time. Jesus says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, it doesn't matter what the mountain is. It could be a mountain of debt. It could be a mountain of sickness. It could be a mountain of a legal battle. But Jesus says, be thou, be thou removed and thou cast into the sea and have not doubt in your heart, but ye shall believe that these things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Jesus says that when you speak to your mountain and your faith is not contaminated with fear and you don't have strife in your heart or in your mind and you're not seeking to get equal, you're not seek, equal, seek, seeking to get even with anyone, but you are seeking God's will and God's favor, then God's favor will work for you every single time. You'll speak to that mountain and that mountain of debt, that mountain of legal battle, that mountain of sickness and disease will go from you. And therefore, he says in the 24th verse, Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. That is a promise from God. Jesus spoke these words. He says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. When your heart is right, I want you to understand, when your heart is right, and you have been meditating on the word of God, and you desire the things that Jesus desired, those things, when you speak them according to God's word, when you pray the word of God, as Jesus prayed when he spoke, Our Father who art in heaven, thy will be done on, in heaven as it is on in earth as it is in heaven. This is the prayer that Jesus prayed, that God the Father's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. So you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind to understand that only the things that you pray that are the will of the Father in heaven, those things are the things that are going to be done on earth in your favor. You have to really understand that you can't just pray for anything to happen. You have to pray according to God's will. Now, I want to share with you before we close the broadcast today that our dear brother Paul says, Beloved, I would that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. So I want you to understand in this year of Jubilee, that God desires that you be prosperous, not only, find, not only in your spirit, spiritual prosperity, but you be financially prosperous so that you will have seed to sow so that you can advance and build the kingdom of God here on earth. It takes money. It takes financial provision to live in this world. You don't need money in heaven. You need it in this world. I want you to understand that Paul says, I would that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. I want you to understand that it's God's will that you be healthy. It is not God's will to teach you a lesson by having sickness and disease in your body. So I want you to say that I shall live and not die and I shall declare the works of the Lord. I shall be healthy but it's predicated upon you doing and following God's instructions. As you meditate and you eat the right food, if you get proper rest and you do not stress, and you don't have stress, strife in your heart, you don't have fear, you will be prosperous in your mind and in your heart and in your body 
You'll be prosperous financially because God will give you a strategy to get out of debt. God is, he will bless when you tithe and you don't have any fear that if I give God 10% and I only have 90%, I can't pay my bills. No, you give God his 10% and you praise God and you bless him for his promise that he's blessed the 90% that you have left. And I, I am a testimony in my own life that God not only will bless the 90%, he will give you back a reward overflowing, pressed down in good measure. And if you never rob God, you will always have an abundance because God's plan and purpose is that you always have an increase and that you be bountifully blessed so that you can bless others. It's not just about you, your four, and no more. It's not just about your family. It's that you will have a surplus of blessing so that you can bless someone else in this world. I want to tell you that I'm so happy to be with you at this time, and I want to share with you that God wants to bless you in this year of Jubilee. Be blessed, and we'll see you next time. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Joseph. I'm Dr. William Gray.